God doesn't pull any punches in this week's Torah portion. He describes the catastrophes and calamities and curses that will occur if we stray from observing his word. He points out that even if we try to run, we won't be able to hide because those curses will pursue us and overtake us. There's a famous story told about a wealthy fellow from London who lived many years ago and who was involved in so many charitable endeavors that his family began to complain. So he went to seek advice from the preeminent sage of his generation, the Chafetz Chaim. When he arrived and was able to get an audience, the great sage pointed out to him that in King David, Dovin Amalek's famous Psalm 23 in Tehillim, David praised to God that may goodness and kindness pursue me all the days of my life. The Chavetz Chaim explained to this fellow that there are certain people who are destined to be pursued. There's always something or someone chasing them, following them. They've always got to look over their shoulder. Because of my name, I can relate to that. I always feel harried. So David Melech was praying to God that if I have to be pursued, which he was by his enemies for much of his life, then let me be pursued by goodness and kindness, opportunities to help people, opportunities to extend loans or credit or give charity, rather than being pursued by something more sinister like an enemy. And so the Chavetz Chaim was explaining to this fellow, perhaps you're one of those people who's destined to be pursued. Better that you're being pursued by opportunities for goodness and kindness than by enemies. And with those words, he patted the fellow on the back and gave him the emotional support for him and his family to continue all his charitable works. However, life is not always black and white. More typically, it's gray. And you've got to be careful not to allow your charitable endeavors to come at the expense of your family. You've got to walk a very narrow, lonely tightrope with no safety net, carefully balancing the needs of those outside your home with the needs of those inside your home. It's not an easy balancing act. Everyone dies eventually, but the last thing you want to hear at your funeral is one of your children saying that my father or my mother was there for everyone why wasn't he or she there for me? To this day, I don't think my older children have forgiven me for all of the late nights that I spent in the office early in my career. It was a learning experience, and now, certainly that I'm further along in my career, I'm better able to delegate and manage my own schedule, but I've also learned the importance of getting home just a little bit earlier. Even if it means bringing work home, getting home 10 minutes before a young child's bedtime is a vast difference than getting home 10 minutes after their bedtime. Those 10 minutes are enough to read a book together, watch a sports highlight, tell a story, or maybe study a passage in the Torah together, or run some events from the wild and wacky Kid Olympics. You me? Yeah. There are those who say correctly that a parent can't replace quantity time with quality time. That's true but I'm sure every child would also agree that a little bit of time is better than no time. 